Happy spring, everybody. My name is Seth Mann. I'm the curator of astronomy here at the Museum of Arts and Sciences. And today we're celebrating the spring equinox, uh, the time of year when we have about an equal amount of day and night. Uh, it's not perfectly equal. Uh, that actually happens probably a couple days before the equinox due to the refraction from our atmosphere, from the sun's light. Um, but generally speaking, we have about an equal amount of day and night. Equinox means uh, equal night. So what's happening in our sky is the sun is moving farther north, and as it does so, uh, you're seeing uh, more daylight uh, in our sky. And as the year goes on, the sun moves more north, then south, and more north, and then south. The bobbing up and down is caused by Earth's tilt. You can explain that with a little Earth globe here. Earth happens to be tilted at 23 and a half degrees. And as the Earth goes around the sun, the sun hits the Earth at different angles. And in the spring and the fall equinox, since they're actually the same thing, the sun's energy is hitting the northern hemisphere of Earth and the southern hemisphere of Earth pretty equally. And so that causes uh, the equal amount of day and night in our sky. To put it more, to put it more exactly, uh, this is actually the time of year when the sun's path through the sky called the ecliptic crosses the celestial equator, all right? And that crossing, which happens twice a year, uh, causes our equinoxes. And if you actually trace this path, the sun's path in the sky, it actually makes a figure eight. It's called an analemma. The crossing of the figure eight are the equinoxes that you have twice a year. Uh, one more way to explain this is with this celestial globe. And this shows us the stars uh, as they would be around the Earth, at least if you can imagine it like a celestial sphere around the Earth. And you have the Earth in the center. That little yellow dot there represents the sun. Of course, not to scale, the sun's much bigger than that. And the sun does not go around the Earth, as we all know. But this is a good demonstrator in how the movements of things happen in our sky as seen from our planet. So after the winter time, the sun starts moving more north. And this path, again, is called the ecliptic. This little seam here represents the celestial equator. If you took Earth's equator and brought it out to the stars, that would divide the sky into a northern section and a southern section that you see here. So after the winter time, if you follow that sun, the sun moves more north and eventually, as we get to March, we cross, the sun crosses, the celestial equator, there's the equinox, and then the sun now moves into the northern celestial sphere, uh, and now you're getting into more into the summertime months, eventually getting to actually the beginning of summer in June when the sun sits highest in the sky, so highest above the celestial equator, and then the sun starts descending southward again towards the celestial equator, and then eventually the next few months after that, uh, will make its way to the equator once more to cross for the fall equinox in September. So that's the bobbing up and down of the sun in the sky as seen from uh, far away. This particular spring equinox happens quite early uh, on March 19th at exactly 1149 Eastern Daylight Time here on the East Coast of the United States. Uh, normally happens on March 20th. The reason why it happens so early is because of the timing of leap years and also daylight saving time. This is the earliest we've had a spring equinox in about 124 years, um, but it's just fun to uh, celebrate these changes in our sky and the changes of the seasons, uh, in particular, uh, springtime.